Hey Auburn, Stand do you want to go with me? Reaching for a North Star Waiting just to wake up From this nightmare Where you could be right back in my arms Dancing to the limbo Stuck here in the middle You tell me that it's simple But I could paint A thousand different pictures Of what is wrong But if we turn the clock's back Hello sweet friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be starting a reading vlog and I could not decide if I wanted my first vlog back to be a themed reading vlog or if I just wanted it to be a regular reading vlog and I think that's what I landed on because I am in the middle of reading something that is consuming all of my brain power and I don't really want to shift my reading focus off of it and that is this book right here. This is Daisy Hates. It's the second in the Magnolia Park series. I honestly am feeling so many emotions about this, but the biggest one being that I'm not a scientist, but there is something going on in my brain and the chemistry is being altered because I have no idea when it happened, but I have fallen head over heels in love with these characters. If you guys watched my February wrap up, I reread Magnolia Parks. I read it initially last year in 2023 and it was good, but like not the greatest thing I ever read. I think a lot of that due to the season of life that I was in, but I did very much enjoy the writing. Jessa Hastings writing is incredible. So I decided that I really wanted to continue on in the series, but I needed to reread Magnolia Parks to refresh my brain. And I'm so glad that I did because I ended up actually really enjoying it a lot more the second time that I read it. I really started to like Magnolia and BJ who are the main characters in that one a little bit more, but I still was super intrigued and like more excited to move on to Daisy Hates, which that's what this book follows is Daisy and her story with Christian and Julian, which is her older brother. And I am so glad that I did. I am falling so in love with these characters. Honestly, even though Magnolia and BJ are like in this book because it is a series following this big cast of characters, but obviously they aren't the main point of this book. And even though that is true, I am finding myself falling even more in love with Magnolia and BJ too. Like just really starting to like their characters in a way that's different because of this different perspective that we're getting on them. But let me back up. In this, you're following Daisy and she is the younger sister of Julian who is like a gang lord in London. And primarily their gang is known for like art theft. They can get you any painting that you want for the right amount of money and giving all the the like Italian mob vibes, which I'm actually really liking more than I thought I would. I, well, I mean, I hesitate to say I'm liking it. <laughs> I mean, it's art theft, but it is giving me a lot of the same vibes that White Collar, if anybody knows what show I'm talking about, White Collar is like one of my top five shows of all time. I absolutely adore that show. And in that, it's obviously following a lot of like white collar crime. And I really, really enjoy that show for that reason and a bunch of other reasons, but I just really like that aspect of that show. And this is definitely giving me those vibes. I'm like very intrigued by the art theft aspect of this, but you're following Daisy and Julian, who is her older brother. And then you're also following Christian. Those are the three perspectives that you're getting in this book. And as I've said before about this series, it is just a lot of rich people drama. This cast of characters is so imperfect and so messy. And yet I just, really adore them and you have like this group of people it's not even like a love triangle or a love rectangle it's like a love octagon okay you have daisy who is in love with christian and christian who is in love with magnolia but also is kind of catching feelings for daisy because they have this fling going on right now and then you have daisy being in love with christian but daisy's also kind of hung up on like her first love and christian loves magnolia magnolia loves bj and it's a whole big mess but you're getting so much of Daisy's like backstory. This one, in my opinion, has a little bit more plot behind it because you do have the aspect of like her family being in the literal mob. <laughs> and so it adds a little bit of depth like to her story. Whereas I feel like Magnolia and BJ's book is just 
mainly primarily about their love story and like I said it was really good it's just very very character driven which I do enjoy but it is kind of a nice change of pace to have like a little bit of plot depth in this one too once again Jessa Hastings writing is just chef's kiss it is so good I will say the innuendos are a little bit more crass in this one than I felt like they were in the first one and it's probably just because of the nature of like Daisy and Christian's relationship in this one but I'm still really enjoying it apart from that fact because these characters are just like seeped into my brain I don't know I don't know how to explain it other than my brain chemistry is being altered. So don't mind me while I make this series my entire personality, but because I am loving this one so much, I just decided to roll with just a normal, regular old rating vlog for the week. I am on page 83 in this, and I don't have any plans to put it down anytime soon, but if I do get through this one this week, which I'm hoping to, I am probably gonna take a little breather. I don't I very, very rarely jump in a series from one to the next to the next and usually take like a breather, palate cleanser, and then go back to it. I found that that is what works best for me. And so if I get done with that one, I might pick up The Antique Hunter's Guide to Murder by CJ Miller. This is a new release. It is one that is so high on my anticipated releases for the year. I just don't know that you get more Caitlin than this Antique Hunter guide to murder give me both of those things any day of the week so i'm very excited to get to this one it says freya lockwood is shocked when she learns that arthur crockleford quite the last name antiques dealer and her estranged mentor has died under mysterious circumstances she has spent the last 20 years avoiding her quaint english hometown but when she receives a letter from arthur asking her to investigate sent just days before his death Freya has no choice but to return to a life she'd sworn to leave behind. Joining forces with her eccentric Aunt Carol, Freya follows clues and her instincts to an old manor house for an antiques enthusiast weekend, but not all is as it seems. It's clear to Freya that the antiques are poor reproductions and her fellow guests are secretive and menacing. What is going on at this estate and how was Arthur involved? More important, can Freya and Carol discover the truth before the killer strikes again? I am so excited about it. I am assuming Aunt Carol is going to be like an older woman and we all know how I feel about old people, okay? Give me all the old people, especially English old people, say less. I'm here for it, I'm very excited. So if I get done with Daisy, this is probably the one I'm gonna hop into next. And then lastly, as you saw, I started out this vlog with a little bit of footage from a library trip that I took earlier today with Auburn. She lives to ride around in the car. So anytime I can take her somewhere, I try to. But I made a return of the three books that I showed you. One of those I read and I did not really care for. I talked about it in my February wrap up. The Hoaxes and Homicides, that is the second book in the Dear Hermione mystery series and I wasn't able to get to it before my loan was up. Very disappointed about that, but I'm kind of taking that as a sign that I'm supposed to just start with the first one because I haven't read the first one in that series either. My library didn't have it when I checked that one out. So I think maybe I'm gonna backtrack and read the first one first and then the second and do it, you know, the way you're probably supposed to. And then I also returned everyone on this train as a suspect. Stay tuned for my March wrap up because guys, that was a five star read for me and I cannot wait to gush with you guys about it. I absolutely adored it. So because you're watching the vlog, you get the spoilers, but I have all the thoughts. And I looked around and I didn't find too much. I'm really, really trying to focus on my physical TBR and not check out too many books because I have a bad habit of checking out books and then not being able to get to them, hence hoaxes and homicide. But I'm just really trying to be a little bit more mindful about the books that I already have on my shelf that I'm excited to get to, but I do really love browsing my library still. And even though I know it's free, I try not to like get, especially new releases, I try not to check out too many new releases if I don't know like for a fact I'm gonna be able to get to them because I don't wanna take those away from somebody else who's like ready to read them. So I didn't check out very many, but I did get this one. I am very excited about this one. I have not seen anybody really talking about it except for Jacqueline Wheeler. She is where I heard of it. And it is Anna O by Matthew Blake 
Blake, and it is a thriller. First of all, I was already intrigued by the synopsis, which I'm going to read you guys here in just a second. But when I picked it up at the library, I also saw that Nita Prose is blurbed on the front. I always look at the blurbs and she is the author of like the Molly the Maid mystery series, which I really, really like. I recently read the second one in that series a few months ago, or maybe it was in January and I just really enjoyed it and I love her characters. So the fact that she really enjoyed this one has me super intrigued, but this one says what really happens and what are we capable of when we sleep? What if our nightmares really aren't nightmares at all? Anna Ogilvie is a budding 25-year-old writer with a bright future. Then one night, she stabs two people to death in her sleep. Anna, now dubbed Sleeping Beauty by the tabloids, has a rare psychosomatic disorder known as resignation syndrome. Dr. Benedict Prince is a forensic psychologist and an expert in the field of sleep-related homicides. To solve the case, he must wake up Anna so she can stand trial. But he has to be careful. Anna's a high-profile suspect, and he's got career secrets and a complicated li personal life of his own. As Anna shows the first signs of stirring, Benedict must determine what really happened and whether she should be held responsible for her crimes. Only Anna knows the truth about that night, and only Benedict knows how to discover it. But what they find out may put them both in grave danger. So this is reminding me a lot of like the silent patient. So I'm very intrigued. It sounds really good. So that is kind of the lowdown on what you can expect reading wise from this vlog. I talk with my hands a lot. I hope that that is not annoying. It's just, you know, it is what it is. So I'm just realizing that as I'm watching myself in the viewfinder that I talk with my hands a lot. So right now, I think I'm going to change out of my like favorite, new favorite cardigan, loving it so much. It gives me all the spring vibes and it makes me so happy. I'm gonna change out of this and then I think I'm gonna take Auburn for a walk. I think while I walk her, I am either going to listen to a short little audiobook that I checked out from the library called A Date for Daisy. I think I'm either gonna listen to that or I might listen to Haunted Cosmos. If you guys don't know what that podcast is, boy, are you missing out. If you are super into like supernatural things, that podcast is so good. I enjoy it so much. I really enjoy podcasts like that. I listen to like Haunted Cosmos. I listen to High Strange, um, which was just like a limited series, a limited podcast. I listen to Blurry Creatures. Um, I am all about all the supernatural things, you know? And Haunted Cosmos is just done so well. Like I cannot recommend it enough. If that is something that interests you, um, like their tagline is exploring a world that isn't just things. And that is exactly what it is, but it is so well produced. And the two guys that make it are actually Christians. And so they very much like approach all of these supernatural things, like from a biblical basis. And they kind of give you the facts and like read all these like crazy, insane, like to the Western ear stories. And then they kind of back it up with like what they think spiritually could be going on. It's so good guys. I cannot recommend it enough. And I'm about halfway through like the newest episode. So I might listen to that. Now that I'm talking about it, I'm definitely gonna listen to that. So we're gonna go take Auburn for a walk. And then tonight the weather is so pretty. And I told Jeff we could either grill out burgers or we can go sit on a patio somewhere and have dinner out on a patio. And I am fine with either option. I think he was leaning towards the patio. I'll take you guys along. You know the drill. Come spend the week with me and let's get this vlog going. Summer rain on a window Watch the time float on Cool it blows a memento As I fall behind I'm so sorry for dreaming about the future As you 
saw we did not end up on a patio um but we did go out to dinner and it was delicious but today is a new day i have been at work and i also had an absolutely mortifying moment friends it is very windy in oklahoma today and your girl chose to wear a dress to work and i'm pretty sure a whole lot of our employees may have seen my booty cheeks and i'm very embarrassed to go back to the store right now but we're just gonna hope and pray that nobody saw and nobody says anything <laughs> because i am honestly mortified so that is the most eventful thing that has happened today other than i have made it way further in this book so i have made it to page 165 chapter 29 right now we are finally like christian has finally realized oh i think i actually have deeper feelings for daisy than i thought i did i'm still really just loving these characters and like so hopeful that there will be character growth i actually just messaged jordan and said listen like i gotta know right now if I continue this series, are they gonna continue to be this frustrating? It's definitely like one of those lovingly frustrating plots, like all the angst and like you feel what they feel because Jess's writing is so good. But I also kind of wanna know that like, if I continue on, they're gonna like learn from their mistakes. You know what I mean? So waiting to hear back from her on that, but I am still really enjoying it. Like I've said a million times, these characters are just so perfectly imperfect. Like they just, because of the way Jessa writes them, you genuinely feel the things that they're feeling and you get inside of their head in a way that I honestly haven't read from an author in a while. So for that reason alone, like I, just can't help but love them you know how, literally how many times can i say that that i love them i do though i do love them so yeah that's a reading update for this i'm gonna head back to work and hope that my private business is still my private business and not everybody else's you know and i'm gonna eat some lunch finish my day and then i will talk to you guys after work if you're ever in need of a camera boost, this one's a good option. She's a brick. Oh, that's so much better. Isn't that better? That's better. So the day is done and we're back home. I don't really have any plans tonight except for maybe, possibly, to finish this. I have been analyzing all afternoon <laughs> why I love these books so much because I will say, this is not my typical thing. I'm just trying to figure out what it is about these characters and like these stories that I am just obsessing over. And I think I have figured out it really does come down to Jessa Hastings writing. So the things that these characters are doing, A, would not condone, would not, would not tell my bestie, you go do that, that sounds like, a super wise idea would not do it and I also typically in books am like so frustrated when characters continually make frustrating decisions but I think what is different about these characters is that because they these books are so character driven they are like so character driven even this one which I said is more plot driven which it is I feel like than the first one it is still heavily and primarily character driven. And I just feel like because of that, you really are getting the heart of the character coming through on every single page. The way that Jessa Hastings has written these characters, you feel what they are feeling. You get to hear and understand like every single thing that they are thinking and why they're making these decisions. And while they are not wise decisions, it really builds empathy in you as the reader to not agree, but to understand 
where their headspace is at. And from what Jordan is saying, that only like continues. You only continue to get more and more background on these characters. I also think another thing that I find really fascinating about this one in particular is Daisy actually has quite a few comments and like conversations surrounding like God and faith. I mean, this is not a Christian fiction book but she's making these comments that I think just add like an extra layer of depth to her story in particular. Like near the very beginning, there's this conversation that she has with her brother about like the sins of their family because their family is straight up the mafia <laughs> and has like obviously done a lot of like really bad and shady things. But she has this conversation with him about like whether or not he believes in original sin. I don't know, it's just, it's adding another layer to the story that's really like putting me in her head. So I'm enjoying like that aspect of it. I don't necessarily agree with the theological conclusions that she's coming to, but I do think that it's just like a fascinating like under layer to these characters and they are thought provoking questions um, to think through like whether you come to the same conclusion or as her or not so I'm liking that aspect of it but more than anything I really think that I mean it is the rich people drama I do enjoy like I loved Gossip Girl for that very reason it is so different from the life that I live that it just kind of fascinates my brain but these characters in particular because you truly are following like their highest of highs and their lowest of lows you're just building like so much connection with them if that makes sense. I hope any of that makes sense, but that is the conclusion that I've come to as to why these books are hitting me so hard. Like, I honestly don't know that I have felt this way about a series of books and a cast of characters, like, as a whole since Thursday Murder Club came out. And if you have been around on my channel, you know that is a heavy statement because Thursday Murder Club those books are some of my favorite books of all time. And it's been a minute since I have felt that way about a cast of characters. And I'm feeling really just deeply connected to these flawed, super imperfect, frustrating characters. <laughs> it's such a confusing feeling because it's like, I would not widely recommend this book series to people uh, for a number of reasons. The biggest one being that it has a lot of trigger warnings. The content is not not going to be for everyone. If you have ever been somebody who loved someone so much and it was not reciprocated or you didn't think it was reciprocated, if you have ever been somebody who has ever walked like a season of your life where you too were like not of sound mind and like not making like the best and wisest decisions based on like things that had happened in your life like I just think that you can really relate to these characters so take that for what you will like I said it is the weirdest thing for me to sit here and gush about this book with you guys but also at the same time be like hey but like maybe you don't read this <laughs> because it just seems like so polar opposite but hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying I will update you guys soon hello sweet friends Woo. okay work is done Thank you, Lord. <laughs> some days, you know, some days you're just really extra thankful. But today is over. It was a good day. I won't lie, there at the end, there was an experience that had your girl a little worked up, but all is good. Um, but if I seem frazzled, that could be why just being transparent, you know? But it's all good because you know what I'm watching for the actual third time? Lauren posted a vlog and when I tell you the actual dopamine that hit my brain, <laughs> the minute, the minute I saw this, oh my gosh, guys. First of all, how beautiful, how beautiful this is my best friend. But also I have just missed her vlogs and her content like beyond, 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 beyond but we have made major headway in our relationship with Daisy and Christian. Of course, my love is just deepening. I am hoping to finish this tonight, either on sprints or at least maybe before I go to sleep. But yeah, for right now, we're gonna settle in for the night. I'm gonna go on a little walkie walk and walk the pooch, then come back and read a little bit, hop on sprints with Gwen and just enjoy a really good evening. 
I will see you guys later. Apparently this is just the seat that this vlog is gonna take place in, okay? Uh, we're back from our little walkity walk. I'm about to hop onto sprints. I just wanted to give a little update on this before I hop onto sprints and before I finish it because I'm gonna finish it during sprints tonight. But some stuff just went down. One thing I will say about this book is that there's a lot of action in this book. Like a lot more action than what you would think with it being a romance, but I guess because of the nature of like the mafia vibes, like guns and ammo and enemies and it's a whole thing, but super fun. And there's a scene that just went down that I was like, wait, what? what just happened i honestly am like really at this point not understanding why people love julian so much um at the beginning i did really like his like protective vibes over daisy i felt like it was like very endearing sarcastic and kind of cocky and so i was like okay like i kind of see where people could really adore him because i had heard a lot of people really love him but now after what just happened i'm kind of like no like I'm kind of confused. Oh my gosh. If you guys can hear the squeaking, I'm so sorry. But I just, I'm like, no, it's a hard no. If you've read, you know, I can't really say anything because I don't want to spoil anything. But I'm just like very confused now. Like why people are so obsessed with him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So if you've read this and you want to explain or like justify your feelings, feel free to do so in the comments because I would be very interested to know what you're telling yourself to love him so much. But Daisy and Christian are so stinking cute together. I can't get over it. Okay. I cannot get over it. Christian, I heart him. I heart him. Okay. Christian is so much better than BJ. Um, I understand I have three more very long books to go, but as it stands right now, that is where I lie. And hopefully I will still feel that way by the end of this book. I am really hoping so because I just love him so much. I just think his character is so sweet. I just think he's a gem. And so I will report back. I'm gonna hop on the Gwen's Patreon sprints, finish this puppy up, and then I will be back. Okay, friends, well, we have arrived at the pinnacle of our reading journey. I, last night, finished Daisy Hates, and I have all the thoughts. So I'm actually really glad I didn't come on here last night because I don't know that I would have been able to put into words how I feel about the ending of this book. I tried to message Jordan about it, and I honestly just felt like I was talking in circles because the ending of this was so frustrating. I feel like that has been the word for this entire vlog, this entire reading journey is frustrating. But honestly, truly, that's the best word to describe it because it's like Jessa Hastings dangles the carrot in front of you and then rips it away and dangles it again and rips it away. So much angst. So much just constantly me trying to figure out where it's going next like when is the next thing gonna blow up the ending of this I think the last thing that I told you guys was we had reached a part that was pretty like violent and like whoa <laughs> I did not really see it coming as of the end of this book I still am NOT a Julian fan he definitely did not have enough real estate left in this book to make me okay with him again right now we will see how that develops for the rest of the series all of that to be said this book does not end the way that you want it to and I was prepared for that but it still hurt so much I also would say this book, the more that I reflected on it, and then when I got on Goodreads to write out my review, I realized that this book made me think so much deeper than I ever thought that it would for so many different reasons. I feel like because she does such a good job of putting you in the character's head, I spent a lot of time while reading this book thinking, if I hadn't had my personal life, right? My background, how I grew up, my faith, my current life, like if I didn't have any of that and I had lived their lives, would I be making these same frustrating decisions? And to be honest, like I would. There's so much self-preservation from these characters. I feel like honestly in Magnolia Parks too, 
everything that they do is out of self-preservation and it really got me thinking about how a lot of times obviously not always but a lot of times when you grow up in a household with the kind of money that they're throwing around in these books or like in gossip girl when you grow up with that amount of money a lot of times with that comes major instability a dad who works all the time or a mom who works all the time two parents who work all the time parents who are traveling you know you see that so often in different adaptations of rich people drama and it really got me thinking about how stability really does shape and form us in our adulthood but especially in like the age that these characters are daisy's like 20 years old in this she lost both of her parents her big brother is a mafia lord like there's so much instability in all of their lives in different ways shape shapes and forms that honestly it makes a lot of sense why they're so imperfect why they are so chaotic and frustrating and so i just spent a lot of time last night really reflecting on like how i felt about this book guys i i can't get over how much i loved it how much i love these characters i know i mentioned this too but there was a lot of me like thinking through about how this truly is a character study and on the surface it just seems like a super toxic love story and to be fair like it is but it really is so much deeper than that even though they're so imperfect and they're so chaotic i think because i have really lived in their heads i'm rooting for them like more so than for the romance i mean don't get me wrong christian for life like literally christian okay but the way i'm rooting for these characters goes beyond the romance truly like i am rooting for them in life <laughs> in their life to move past the utter dysfunction and to somehow have some semblance of a normal life moving forward or to at least like understand and acknowledge where this desperate need for self-preservation is coming from what i'm trying to say is i did not realize that these were going to be philosophical reads for me but they have been and i couldn't be happier to give this book five stars and i'm just very interested to see how the series plays out so yeah that is it but the best way I thought to end this reading vlog was to make my obsession official with this series, to make my love known for this series. I thought what better way to end this than opening some happy mail. And it is a Magnolia Park shirt. Unfortunately, it is not a Daisy Hates shirt, although I did order two. Do I need three Magnolia Parks Universe shirts? No. But did I buy them? I sure as heck did. And this Magnolia Parks one came from Etsy and she shipped it from like not very far from my house. And so I got it super quickly and I'm so excited about it. So let me show you what I got. I really hope you're able to see it. <laughs> I might have to, I might have to turn around. Hold please. Okay, we're gonna try it this way. I think it'll be better, but it's a light blue shirt and then it says, how's the weather parks with a little B. If you haven't read, how's the weather parks is how BJ like asks Magnolia, like what kind of mood she's in. I think particularly it tends to be like, how is she feeling about him? And he always asks, how's the weather parks? And she always replies like cloudy and dreary or sunny and blue skies or something like that. And I'm just so stinking excited about it. But with that being said, I'm gonna end this vlog here. I'm gonna go put my shirt on and I will see you guys in my next vlog. Bye. <laughs>